Welcome to the Marathon Medic Podcast. My name's Amy and I'm a junior doctor and running coach with an interest in sports medicine. On this series of the podcast, we're talking about running and travel. On this final episode of the series, I'm sitting down with travel and culture blogger Jess Anion brown to chat about the best places to explore by foot, both in the UK and across the world. So Jess, welcome to the podcast and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. (laughs) Um, So this is a little bit different to my usual podcast because there's a non-runner here, which is is new. I'm not sure if that's allowed. Um, But I just invited you because I thought it'd be really useful to chat about good areas that runners can go to explore on, on their feet because I always think the best way to explore places are by foot and you see so much running yeah. around. Um, so Definitely. could you just start by telling everyone a little bit about yourself? Um, so my name is Jess. I run a travel and culture blog called Road to Culture Them. And the idea behind that is to sort of show people that you can find you know, culture, local culture, wherever you go. Um, and I also, well, for my day job, I'm also a doctor. So I've actually worked with Amy yeah. um, <laughs> sort of end of last year. Uh, so that's how we first met. So yeah. <laughs> um, how long have you been uh, travel blogging for? Uh, it's been about two and a half years now. Yeah. So I started it when I had my kind of year out of work and then I was like, oh, it'd be really good to document this and actually, you know, um, and then after that, I just got hooked on it really and just continued to travel during work time and then, yeah, kept documenting it and it's been really, really fun. I guess it gives yeah. like a bit of a purpose to your travel as well and even more excuses to Yeah, travel, definitely. Definitely have to concentrate on what you're doing and where you're going so you can actually recommend things. But it's quite nice to then look back and actually think, oh yeah, I went here and I went there. And do you typically <laughs> travel with people or alone? Um, more so with people now than solo. I haven't solo travelled since sort of beginning of 2019. Um, I like travelling with people. It's sort of, you know, reduced costs. It's nice to bounce ideas off each other, sometimes for safety, depending on where you're going. Um, but also solo is quite nice to just do what you want and just get on with it. Yeah. <laughs> and what was the first place you ever went to that kind of kicked off the blogging aspect of things? So when I went to Cuba, actually, for my elective, so I didn't... Oh, medical elective. Yes, medical okay, elective, nice. yeah. So I didn't blog, but at the time I remember thinking, oh, I want to like write about what I'm doing and because mm-hmm. um, I didn't have internet there or anything so I didn't document things very well but kind of after that I thought it'd be quite nice to be able to do that but it took then a couple of years before I actually started doing it properly. What mm. was that like being in Cuba for your elective? I had, I had a really good time because um, I mean from the sort of medicine point of view like Cubans you know, very good doctors um, they seem to learn basically in the same way that we would learn here and okay. they seem to focus a lot on kind of prevention and public health um because they you know they appreciate that you know if you're preventing things happening and you'll teach people to live a better lifestyle then it will improve things in secondary care so I I thought that was really good I was like that's kind of thing that we would preach and Mm -hmm. um and the Cubans themselves are very receptive to that because they know that their healthcare is very good and because it's you know it's free and available for everyone so they, they take that on board quite a lot. They really respect their doctors. So it was very interesting to see those ideas, but obviously in a different almost world because um, resources are a bit different and especially the people who live in kind of old Havana and the kind of poorer parts. Um, so yeah, they still had quite a lot of TB and, and things like that. So you'd see it on the wards, but they'd have posters up about things and immunizations. So they're very kind of proactive. So I really liked that. And then just Cuba itself is such an interesting place. They are very chilled and happy-go-lucky and, you know, they, they enjoy their life. And I think they're very, like, grateful for um, the things that they have because, you know, education is freely available, healthcare is freely available. So they're very sort of grateful for all of those sorts of things. And it's really hard to talk to Cubans about the politics because they don't really like to talk about it. Um, so I was always trying to learn a bit more and talking to like the grandma of the family I lived with is probably the only person that would tell me things she's probably like yeah whatever but so you actually lived with I lived with a local family yeah wow. it's such a nice way to, <laughs> yeah. to feel like you're involved in, yeah and actually take the most from the experience nice yeah um so to kick things off we're talking about best places to explore by foot and 
with lockdown at the moment, travel is a little bit more difficult. So yeah. I was thinking we could talk about the UK first because yeah. staycation has become a bit of a buzzword. <laughs> it has. I even wrote a post, a blog post about it actually, because I thought, you know, I'm not traveling abroad at the mm-hmm. moment. Um, and a lot of people were kind of thinking, how can we enjoy the UK, especially now it's warmer. So yeah, I've been kind of looking into staycations and done a few myself. Where have uh, you been recently? Um, most recently I've done, uh, I went to a beach in Kent called, um, Botany Bay. So it's part of Broadstairs. Mm -hmm. So it's got kind of the white cliffs and a sandy beach. So it's really lovely, um, when it's hot, which it has been. So you should get down there probably before next week, if you can. (laughs) Before the storms. Before the storms, yeah. Um, and I also went to kind of Midhurst, which is in kind of the Surrey, um, Downs, which was really nice as well. Just very luscious and very peaceful. So, yeah. And where would you recommend uh, UK travellers to go if they are runners and want to do lots of walks, hikes, runs? Where are the kind of favourite places in the UK that you've been? Yeah, um, I remember Snowdonia being amazing in Wales. Um, but I don't know if you're very fit, you could probably run it, but I mean, at least to hike it, that's really nice. Um, we went to all the Brecon Beacons, Epping Forest, and, and also went to the Lake, Lake District as well. So I remember that was really beautiful. But if you go onto the National Trust website, they've it's really good now because they show you what's open, what's limited because of COVID, and then they grade the hikes as well um, and sort of the recommend trails. So that's what I used to do my recent um, walks. So yeah. yeah, I've actually gone on that website as yeah. well. It's just uh, nationaltrail.co.uk. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and you can list how far, yeah. how intense, and also yeah. what you want. So like, yeah. if you want to be near water, you can just select that. And exactly. Suggestions. Yeah. Um, so that's in like Pembrokeshire, South mm. Downsway, North Downsway. I think yeah. there's seven kind of areas that yeah. you have a lot of information about. Yeah. So that's so, so good. So I would definitely recommend that. And on the topic of the Lake District, um, it's a great place for fell running. Ah. <laughs> and recently there's uh, been a new record set for the Bob Graham round, which is um, a walk. Well, it's not a walk, it's a massive run yes. that goes over 66 miles and covers 27,000 feet. Wow. 42 of the summit. So if anyone wants to <laughs> head to the Lake District for a challenge, um, I think it's actually split in different sections so people could go and do the Bob Graham round without doing the entire thing in one wow. day like crazy people do. Yeah. And when you're going to these places, mm. uh, we've spoken about nationaltrail.co.uk, how do you plan your walks or routes? Do you tend to kind of look, look them up online or make them yourselves or just go for it and hope for the best oh no for that I definitely plan it because <laughs> I don't know. you don't want to end up in you know someone's farm and sort of trying to get out of a sticky situation so yeah I, I just follow their routes actually um and just go by what they say one thing I really like to do is just search for races in an area and you mm. don't actually have to do the race but their routes are usually oh. on the website so yeah. you can just steal part of the route yeah and if it's in a race it's usually quite a good route and well yeah. run so that's a really nice way to ah. visit certain areas that's a good tip for me as well yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just type in like ultra in you know jurassic coast or pembrokeshire or somewhere yeah. and it usually comes up with different mm. race routes which is useful yeah the scottish highlands and their trails and mountains are amazing i think actually we forget to go to scotland sometimes, yeah don't we? it doesn't seem exotic enough but yeah it's a really great country mm. have you had any trips to scotland and would you have any recommendations for anyone yeah so i went to scotland for the first time last year um but i went a couple of times and the first trip was to glasgow and we drove to the loch lamond national park okay. um so it's about an hour drive from kind of the city center um and i think when you go beyond it you're basically in the highlands and it's absolutely beautiful like it's definitely a place it's to go. stunning um and I mean we we were in Luss which was kind of the first kind of village that we got to so they had a, a bit of a kind of a gentle trail that you could um hike um or I'd say walk wasn't really a hike um but I know that you know within the national park there was lots of different places that you could plan and, and do proper hikes if you wanted to um, it looked like you were in a painting. I don't know how else to describe it. It was so beautiful. So def- definitely to go there if you go to Glasgow. Is there anywhere in Europe or a, a quick flight away that mm. you've been and thinks are, think are a great place to explore on your feet? Yeah, so Norway is one. Um, they, I mean, a lot of Norway, their, their lifestyle is very, 
you know, ad- adept for that, very outdoorsy. Mm. They'll just be running and, and hiking and it's all very normal for them. They don't have walks, they have hikes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, and they have lots of like beautiful mountains in them. I went to Bergen. It's a very mountainous, very beautiful. So this, you know, in the city centre, you can do a little hike um, up there and then you get to you get a beautiful view across the city and the, the, the fjords as well, they're called. Um, so yeah, definitely sort of Norway, Bergen. I'm sure they probably have lots of races there actually. I, I, somewhere it's on my bucket list yeah. to do, especially because I think you can combine that really nicely with a few days in a city. Yes, exactly. And then escape. Yeah. How long do you think you need to spend in Norway to fully experience kind of the outdoors as well as the cities yeah I would say at least a week okay um because I was there for sort of four days so it, it felt a little bit quick because we what we didn't get to do is sort of travel along the, the fjord so that would have been quite nice I'd probably go visit them again at some point um so I think you know you get to do that a little bit you can probably do a good you know few hikes and and then have a bit of downtime in the city mm. anywhere else in Europe so we were, we were talking before about how a lot of kind of beachy places have, you know, mountains mm. and things if you just get out there. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Like one of my favourite places is Mallorca and I think most people would think, oh, you go to Palma or one yeah. of the beachy areas. And actually, if you just drive yeah. half an hour away, they have some amazing trails. They have the GR221 trail in the okay. north of the island, yeah. which is a really long trail and it's mm. really well signposted. Uh, yes. You've been to Slovenia as well, yes. and that's quite an outdoorsy place. It is, yeah. Really, really lovely um, little country in the eastern of Europe. Um, we did a lot of, we spent a lot of time, there's obviously like Lake Bled is like the most famous one. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a few other lakes around there as well. Where um, would you recommend staying if you if you kind of didn't want to hit the tourist spot of Lake Bled? Um, so if you stay in the capital actually, Ljubljana, it's, I wouldn't say it's, I mean, there are tourists there, but it didn't feel like it was massively touristy. It's quite a small city, um, even though it's the capital. So you can stay there. And then we just stayed there and then just visited, did a day trip to Lake Bled and then did another day trip to like the Vintgar Gorge. And then we went to like the caves as well. They've got a place called Pajama Castle and um, also has these caves as well. Um, so it's a castle in a cave, which is really crazy. I've never seen anything okay. like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's, it was literally built inside this massive cave, okay. and then there's also caves that you can go into as well. So you can do a lot of easy. They're quite easy to take a bus to or drive if you wanted yeah. to. Nice. Yeah. And in terms of planning routes around there, again, did you just look online, or are they all well marked if you just turn up? And... Yeah, so a bit, a bit of both. Looked online a little bit, um, and then again, kind of asking around to see what sort of the locals recommended. Um, so yeah, I think just a mixture of the two, really. Can you talk to me about a few of your favourite places that you visited? Yeah, so the number one, definitely Peru. Mm-hmm. Um, Peru is an amazing country. Um, it's It's got a lot of mountains and just a lot of, a lot of nature, different landscapes. Um, so a lot of, you know, for whatever you fancy, really. But and I, when I went there three years ago now, I did kind of Machu Picchu. I didn't hike it fully because... I, wasn't there for long enough to do it because it's normally about a four day hike. Um, but if you can do it, that's apparently amazing because you sort of get to Machu Picchu like really early in the morning. Mm. There's no one else there. The clouds are in really beautiful position. So um, definitely do that. Um, and then also the Rainbow Mountains. Um, so you do that in a day, really high altitude. So that's the challenge more than the fitness part. But, you know, that's when you get to the top of that and you just see this, you know, what's called Rainbow Mountains because the the landscape is different colours. So it's really beautiful. Um, So I highly recommend that for anyone, whether you're a runner, walker, even if you're not, you know, you should do it because it's... (laughs) Is that something that can be done in one day? It can be done in one day, the rainbow hike, yeah. How did you cope with the altitude? (laughs) It was hard. Really? It was really hard. Um, I remember getting there. I went with my friend and we, they give you cocoa leaves which is meant to help so you get it in like tea hard boiled sweets um i think even chewing gum like anything so i remember on the plane from lima to cusco the, the air hostess were giving us this tea and we we're like oh what's this tea and then they're like yeah it's meant to help with the altitude so we were drinking it like every day um i felt like i was having like an asthma attack the first day i was <laughs> really? so breathless just walking just around yeah. the city center so you need a few days to acclimatize mm. 
And so would you recommend going and acclimatising for a few days before? Definitely. Walks? Definitely, definitely. Um, the way we did it, we, we spent a couple of days just in town, just getting used to the um, altitude. And then we did a Sacred Valley tour, which there's not much hiking, you're just going around. Um, but then that's just a little bit higher than Cusco. So you're just trying to build it up. And then sort of Machu Picchu is the next highest. And then um, the Rainbow Mountains are the highest, sort of 5,000 metres. So you kind of, if you can do it in that order, that should make things easier for okay. you. <laughs> Did the cocoa leaves help at all? I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it gives you the feeling that Yeah, we just drank them every day because every like hotel and hostel will offer it to you. So mm. yeah. I don't know if there's anything else you can really take. Trying to avoid drinking when you're there um because that drinking makes it worse like a lot worse <laughs> so probably get that all your hikes experience <laughs> yeah get all your hikes out of the way and then you can have a nice night out but mm-hmm. you'll probably get drunk quicker anyway because of the yeah. altitude <laughs> yeah so for is one for the for the bucket list i'm Definitely. not sure of any races or anything around there myself but i mean i'm sure there must be yeah probably yeah mm-hmm. there's lots of other parts outside of cusco that they have a lot of other hikes and things so i'm mm-hmm. sure yeah nice uh, where else in the world should we be going? <laughs> um, so in Central America and Guatemala, um, they have a lot of volcano hikes. So they do kind of overnight hikes. So you kind of see the sunrise and uh, you definitely have to be quite fit for that. I don't think altitude is too much of a problem, but more so fitness. Another place that I wanted to ask you about was Costa Rica because I saw some of your pictures. Yeah. And it's not somewhere that I would necessarily think to go, but it looked amazing and yeah, it is very, it's very green. I think it's the most, one of the most green countries in the world, actually, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a lot of outdoorsy um, things you can do there, especially if you go to um, Monte Verde, which is kind of okay. like their like eco-tourism city or town. Um, and then, I mean, you can do things like kind of zip lining and, and go on hikes and, and all this sort of things. And it's just very like, you're just like in a rainforest basically. And it's very, very, very beautiful. Um, so very outdoorsy for again different ranges of fitness and kind of what you feel like doing because it's very tropical and very hot it's quite Mm. I found it quite hard to be very active but the options are there and you can all jump into a waterfall afterwards you know it's kind of running I'd like to do yeah (laughs) absolutely (laughs) and when you say it's like an eco-tourism place is that where you stayed yeah, so I stayed in Monteverde. That was one of the cities we stayed in. Um, so a lot of their tourism is ecotourism. So they, um, a lot of their tours that you can book there will be outdoor activities. So that's kind of okay. what they do. Um, there's not really much to see there outside in Monteverde, outside mm-hmm. of if you're going to do an activity somewhere. So everyone there is sort of quite active and on their next activity. <laughs> yeah. And you're just sweltering in the heat. Yeah. <laughs> what have you learned through all your travelling experiences and what would be kind of your big tips for people that are planning maybe more adventurous holidays going mm. forward? Um, so I guess you have to leave a bit of room for spontaneity or errors or, or things like that because... I think sometimes you're very preoccupied about what you want to do and it can't happen for whatever reason or things go a bit AWOL. It can be very stressful, especially mm-hmm. if you've always wanted to go there. Um, and, you know, so I've kind of learned over the past few years that you have to just go with the flow a little bit and have a rough idea about what you want to do, but don't stress about it too much. And, and I guess you adapt in these situations when they come and you, you realise that you're more resilient than you probably thought. Yeah, <laughs> or you can think true. more on your feet or you can... I think especially if you're travelling solo as well. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Because that's all on you. There's no one to rely on to take you where you need to go um, or to navigate you. So, yeah. And um, if people are trying to pack a light, have you, have you discovered <laughs> any tips in all your kind of weekend getaways that you share? So packing cubes are amazing oh is that when you like zip things yeah okay. so they they're just like a little um yeah they're kind of like squares they come in different sizes you can normally get them from like amazon and they'll be in a pack of six or something so you, you just you can fold your clothes into them and you can fit a lot into them normally i can fit in probably a week's worth of clothes into about three cubes okay so when you put it in your bag it, it doesn't take up much space so because for me i'm a heavy packer so that's changed oh. my life <laughs> 
<laughs> so, the opposite. Yeah, so, so you'll be you'll be fine if you have a cube, probably just need one. And it's good because I have like a little laundry one as well. So if you're away for a bit longer, you need to separate your clean and your dirty clothes. It's quite good to have that separate pouch. Mm-hmm. So yeah, packing cubes, definitely. Um, And for people that want to maybe try and do some of these trips. Yes. Obviously, f- flights come with a bit of a price tag. Mm. <laughs> maybe not so much now, but... Yeah, maybe they just get cancelled. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, what are your top tips for uh, saving money on journeys like this? Yeah, so I guess that's where you need to plan a little bit. Um, if, you know, you want to go to a particular place, have an idea of how much it's going to cost and then either putting it away in a different account or, um, or I would say that's probably the best thing, actually put it in a separate account somewhere. Um, just be a little bit intentional with the money if you know that this is going to be a particularly big trip because... Um, I found that was useful when I was a student and kind of in the early days of working. Um, it was like, you know, for Peru, that was an expensive trip. Um, but I just knew I had to save for X amount of time and just sort of put things away or had maybe one less takeout in a week or something, just mm-hmm. making little changes. Um, and then also not trying to avoid booking things before you go. So obviously, you know, outside of accommodation and flights and maybe... Maybe if you're going to a different city and you need to book the transport, I would say try to avoid booking other things because it will be so much cheaper in the country. Okay. So much cheaper. <laughs> you're nodding your head as if you've made mistakes before. Finally. Yeah. And then, and then when you kind of ask and they're like, oh, it really costs this. And you're like, I paid like five times as much mm, <laughs> online. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also another way to save money as well. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. It's hard though, isn't it? Because you want to be organised and planned. Yes, things. yeah. There are a few <laughs> things that you probably need to have booked in advance. So, but most things you can book when you get there. Maybe if you do it on the first day and you think, okay, yeah. I want to do this in this week. And then you can get it sorted. And for anyone that at the moment is thinking about planning a mm. staycation in the UK, mm. is there anywhere that you would recommend or any tips you have for people kind of thinking about ideas of where to go? So... It's tricky because a lot of it depends on the weather, mm. <laughs> which is, yeah, exactly. So when I plan them, it's always, always been kind of last, almost last minute because it's like, okay, is it going to be sunny this week or is it going to be, or maybe not too hot if I want to go for a hike or something. So I guess, yeah, I mean, the weather has to be your top thing because it's going to change probably even from when you look at it to when you go. Um, <laughs> That's not true. So <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's, I found there's a lot of useful guides online. So we talked about the national trails, which was really good to talk about, you know, kind of where you can walk and what's open and Mm. things like that. Um, and then I found a lot of other guides online as well, sort of top, you know, beaches or top places for lakes or hikes or or whatever. Mm. So I just kind of using all of those things really, because I felt that I was learning yeah. during this lockdown you know yeah I think yeah that is one positive is that we've all thought, yeah actually we live in a really nice country we, and yeah we as well explore it exactly yeah um and then also thinking about transport because if, if you drive it's easy mm. um if you need to get public transport then I guess thinking you know how easily can I get here um if I w- also when I do get there do I need to then get around? Because some places, if you need to go around and you've not got a car, it can be a bit tricky. So yeah. just thinking about your transport options as well. And and yeah, cost. I guess cost is the other thing. Mm. But I yeah. think it's in London especially, there's so many places you can go yeah. just for the day. So in yes. lockdown, I was driving out to Kent yeah. most weekends yeah. and uh, picking up the North Downs Way. Yeah. And the North Downs Way is... Wait for it. <laughs> North Drum Downs roll. Way is well. You can guess how long do you think the North Downs Way is? <laughs> how long is it? Yeah. Um. Oh, 150 kilometers. Oh, almost 153 miles. Oh, okay. So close. Um, <laughs> wow. Just, just wrong unit. Yeah. Uh, it, it goes through the Surrey Hills and the Kent Downs. Nice. And so it goes from Farnham. Um, yeah all the way to Canterbury and Dover. Yeah. And the thing about the North Downs Way is not only is it really well signposted, mm. um, so you, you don't, you need to plan roughly where you're starting and finishing. Yeah. But along the route, you don't really need to have a map yeah. out or your phone out. You yeah. can just follow it, which That's is good. nice. Yeah. Um, it's really varied. There's rolling hills, mm. there's fields, there's yeah. trails through woodland. So it 
mixes it up if you're doing a long run. Yeah. Um, and now I've lost my train of thought. Oh, the good thing, <laughs> my favourite <laughs> thing about it is there's so many trails around it. So mm. I think sometimes you can think, oh, well, how am I going to build a route? But the North yes. Downs Way itself mm. is just surrounded by loads of other footpaths. Yeah. And it's so easy to then create a loop. So yeah. you can go on Strava, for example, and it shows you all the trails around it. Yeah. And then you can just loop back to your car and you've had like a nice yeah. walk, hike or run yeah. in Kent within the day, day trip to yeah. London. Yeah. So I think that's it. I mean, start with day trips and get a feel for what you like because um, you don't have to commit to as much. And then, yeah. then if you want to go for a weekend or longer, then yeah. So if you could just end by telling everyone a little bit about how they can find you and follow you and yeah. if they need any travel advice, <laughs> where they can look. <laughs> yeah, so um, you can find me on Instagram or on Twitter, um, Road to Culturedom. And I do have a blog website as well. So I've written about most places that I've been to over the past, I guess, three or so years now actually um, plus I've got a staycation guide which I've got other kind of blogger friends to contribute um, places that they've been around the UK so that's quite a nice guide to look at if you oh. want tips yeah maybe, maybe that would be <laughs> yeah I'm going to need some of those tips as well for myself going yeah. forward <laughs> yeah. are there any final tips that you'd uh, like to share before we finish yeah I think we just have to kind of make the most of what we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're lucky, you know, living in the UK, that we do have a variety of terrains and, and sort of different areas that we can visit. So I think we just need to make the most of it. I mean, staycation is such a... I think people are getting annoyed by the word. They just want to... <laughs> <laughs> they just want to be on a plane mm -hmm. and, and go to Greece or something, which is fine. But whilst we're here, you know, there's a, there's a lot of beautiful things that we can see and do and enjoy. So I think if you just open-minded about it you'll really surprise yourself and I've surprised myself and I'm sure you have as well um yeah with what you found I I keep saying to my parents like most of our summer holidays are kind of going to the Alps and yeah. running on trails and then finishing with like a coffee and a croissant yeah and I had my annual leave in the UK yeah and I went home to my parents in Somerset and yeah. down to Cornwall and I was doing the exact same thing I was running along trails yeah. and then having a coffee and a cake in the <laughs> afternoon I was thinking I spend a lot of money going abroad but actually we can do so much we in can. the UK yeah um, and all those things are cheap it doesn't cost any money to run on trails no that's that's the main thing yeah mm. um, so yeah I hopefully going forward we'll be able to mix up our abroad trips and our staycations I think that would be a nice new normal yeah. I guess yeah. you know? <laughs> something like a benefit to take from this time yeah absolutely great thank you so much thank you for having me <laughs> So thank you so much to Jess for sharing some of her top recommendations for places to travel. I've been tempted by a few of those spots myself, so I've had a little look into some running um, spots and races in some of those areas and thought I'd just share them so we can all plan some trips, hopefully for next year. So uh, in Mallorca, as I've already mentioned, the GR221 trail is a great trail to visit and you can do it in lots of different sections. In terms of places to stay, I'd really recommend Val de Mossa or Sola. They both have really easy access to lots of the routes and they also have amenities even if you visit during an off season, which some of the smaller villages don't. If you're tempted by Bergen, then the Visit Norway website has loads of hiking route suggestions and they also have something called the DNT, which is their trekking association. And their trekking association runs cabins along the hiking routes. So you can plan a long point to point hike or run um, and you can plan these different cabins as places to stop over overnight. In terms of Costa Rica, um, Jess mentioned Monteverde, and there's actually an ultra event that takes place there every December called the Moon Run. The Moon Run takes place in the Cloud Forest, which is an area that's supposed to have great trails and therefore could be a good place to uh, visit any time of the year. Slovenia also has some great running events throughout the year, and some that took my fancy included the Trio Race, which is a race where you enter as a team of three, and it's the last person's time which counts as your overall team result. So it really is a race where teamwork is important. Um, and they have another uh, festival there in June as well, which uh, celebrates all forms of outdoor activities, cycling, kayaking, and running. And that's called the Soccer Outdoor Festival. Um, so that's S-O-C-A. If events aren't what you're looking for, and you'd rather just plan a route yourself when you're on holiday, then I definitely recommend using Strava Routes or Komoot. So there are two apps that I use quite a lot, particularly Strava Routes. Strava Routes allows you to build your own routes, but it also has a great feature which suggests routes in your local area. So you can put in the distance and elevation you want to do, whether you want to 
uh, stay on road or trail and it will give you lots of different options uh, for wherever you might be. If that app is new to you or you're not too familiar with how to use it, then I've added a guide on how to plan routes using Strava Route Planner. And you can find that on my blog at marathonmedic.com. So once again, a big thanks to Jess for joining me on the podcast. If you want to hear more from Jess, then you can find her on Instagram by searching Road to Culturedom. And you can find me by searching Marathon Medic. That's the final episode of this series. So thank you so much for listening.